can't believe I've just recorded all that with my microphone turned off. <sighs> Take 36. How do you guys? It's Luke at Luke's APS, and in this video, we're going to be building docks and painting some rocks, boats, and hose. Yeah, so let's call this episode Docks and Rocks. Is that? I don't even think that's any good. <laughs> but anyway, it'll do. Um, in this video, we're going to be doing the docks for the um, on the on the desert island, um, and we're also going to be doing like the rock faces. Now, we're going to go in with a rock leopard spot technique and do it ultra hyper realistic. <laughs> they seem to be the SEO things that people are using at the minute. <laughs> but we're not. I'm not going to be doing that. This board's very high fantasy. Um, it's very everything's over exaggerated because of the theme of the board. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go old school on it. I'm going to chuck a base coat on and I'm going to do some dry brushing and a few washes. Uh, and we're also going to be working on a little cobblestone path. I'm going to make it as cheap and as quick as possible so we can keep this board costs as low as possible. All right, guys. So let's get the camera down. Let's get knocking it out and I'll, uh, I'll see you at the end. Love, love, love. Right, so first off we're going to be using uh, the Gravelcast dock. Um, the reason we've gone with this is because it's just cheaper to buy one than it is to make one. Um, so yeah, check them out. First we just uh, spray it brown with an army painter, I think that was leather spray, and then we just stick it together with a bit of super glue. We need to think about where we're putting the uh, pillars because we, we're using two segments of this um, to make quite a long uh, pier. Um, but what we're doing is we're only using six legs as we're using the, the land to hold the back end of the um, pier, as you can see here. So now we're just planning where we're going to put the legs. Um, we're not going to put the water on, we're not going to fix this down or anything till the water's on. Because um, getting underneath it will be a pain in the backside. So we just thought we'd best figure out where where's roughly we're going to do it, get it glued in and then just keep it separate till the water goes down. Then once we put the super glue on, just spray it with a bit of activator just so it bonds quicker. And there you go, all done. We will paint it later on. Right, now for the rock faces, what we do is just marking out how big they are. Um, so it's just literally a matter of keep pressing it up against where we need them and then cutting them with a razor saw. Um, razor saw like this is very good for cutting through plaster. It does blunt the blades a bit, uh, but the blades are pretty cheap. Um, and just keep cutting them and trimming the sides till you get a perfect edge, because we will be edging the board uh, at the end of the uh, video series. And just keep testing it for sizing and trimming along till you're happy. And then it should fit more or less perfect. Once you've got it in place, we'll glue them down in a second. And it's just a matter of finding some other stones and bits of uh, rock moulds that you cut and make it look 3D. Um, you could just cut away the foam and chuck just some really big bits in if you wanted. Uh, but we're trying to keep this board as light as possible so we, we're using as minimal uh, rock moulds as possible on this. Um, we're just using a load of small bits that I found in the bottom of a box. We're leaving massive gaps and we'll come in and fill that with some filler and modelling compound later. Now. I'm mixing a bit of PVA in with some pre-mixed filler to glue them down. Uh, the reason we're doing this is there's some fine gaps that'll be easier to fill from underneath when we're gluing it in. Um, now, if you are wanting to do the leopard spot technique, it will not work very well if you're doing it this way because the plasters are different and the glue sort of seals the plaster and if you wash it, you will always see the seams when you use this. If you're wanting to do the leopard spot technique, the best way to do it is to use the same plaster that you've cast the rocks in uh, to fill the gaps. Or you could use modelling compound, but even then there is a slight difference. Um, but sometimes that slight difference can work very well. But let's keep building these up uh, and pressing them down until you're completely happy of your placement and everything. All the excess filler, we smooth it in and wet it on a brush. Um, just to fill in all them really awkward gaps where the compound will be quite hard to get in. Um, so we're just filling that with uh, some really thin plaster, which will wash off uh, as that's starting to dry. Mm -hmm. 
Right now for the cop uh, the path, what we're going to do with this is we're just going to uh, put some PVA glue into some das. We're going to wet his hands um, and wipe it on the surface so the das sticks to it better. Uh, and then we're going to press out the das clay uh, along where we roughly want the cobbled path. And then press up the uh, dock against it to give the edge where we're going to be gluing it to. And then just literally keep pressing it um, out. The rougher you do this, the better the texture, because it means that when you do your uh, your actual cobblestone technique with a green stuff roller like this, you get some different heights and different levels, um, so it, it looks a bit more realistic. The thing is with this uh, roller, the textures on it are a bit smooth. There's no real sort of cobblestone textures. Um, so what we're doing is we're going to cut round the outside and, and finish finish it off, so it's all sharp edged. Uh, so you've got like the last stone showing and then we'll smooth all them cut edges out with some water on a on a paintbrush um, just to finish it off and make it look a bit more smoother and nicer um, and then once we've done that we're going to texture the tops of the um, the tops of the stones um, just to give it some more detail and a bit more texture for when we come to paint it but just smoothing them off on the edges like this helps really blend it into the uh, the ground once we come to put a bit more compound on and finish it off. But for texture what we use is just a, a plastic wire brush. A, a metal wire brush will be too brutal for this. Um, so just use a plastic stiff brush like this just to tap it on it lightly. And what this will do is it will just put some lines and dints and knocks into all your... Um, your cobbles which will just give them a bit more of a stony texture and as you can see you've got a nice little bit of texture it looks like little pock marks from sea weathering and bits and pieces like that so once you've got it to that point we're going to move on to uh, some more modeling compound Right, so the Lux APS modelling compound uh, is a plaster paper mix uh, ideal for filling in between rock moulds or creating rock faces just with it on its own. Now, we couldn't find a rock that would go around this bit easily, um, it was going to be a bit of a pain so I just said for what it's worth I'll just sculpt a little rock face into this and blend it in uh, and just, just do it like that. It's a very simple process to do, just put it down. Um, smooth it in and blend it into all your other rocks and your, your ground form and up to wherever you need it give that about 15 minutes to start firming up and drying and then you'll come back in with a sculpting tool and you'll put all your lines and cuts and everything else in but what we're doing while well, that's sort of firming up and drying is we're just blending in the um, the stone path uh, with a bit more compound um, just so it blends into the original ground cover and so it's got purpose. Right, so with a sculpting look, just a sculpting tool, and just drag it across and pull it about and just get some textures in there. Um, if you sort of follow the rocks, you'll get some idea, but if you get any bits that break off like that, pull them away. Um, and you can also wet your finger and drag it across to smooth anything, any really rough bits out. Um, and it just looks like a nice piece of rock once it's all painted. You might not even realise uh, that there's not a rock mould there once you finish. Right, and then it's just a matter of uh, base coating it all. Uh, I'm using a Xandra dust colour because it's like a nice, um, like, yellowy, golden brown um, it's good for a good sandstone base so we take the uh, dry fitted a uh, dock off and then I dry brush it with the Xandra dust with a little bit of cream in it and I just keep adding a little bit more cream till I'm happy with the overall colour I do this quite gradual so it's not too sharp and then I add quite a bit more in and then you can start see how strong that is um, really go over the top with this like I said we are exaggerating because it is quite a high fantasy table um, and just keep bringing up the colors till you're happy that it sort of blends in with the the ground covering um, this the white sands and everything will cover that in the next video um, so it depends on what color sand you go depends on how light obviously you'd bring your rocks up but just keep adding a bit of cream or a bit of ivory till you're happy with the overall finish now that is a bit brutal and over the top 
Uh, so what we do is we just wash this down with a bit of homemade wash. As you can see, that sinks into all the recesses and starts to look pretty nice pretty quickly. Now, as you're painting this on, you might find it starts to pull in areas and look a bit strong in areas where you don't want it. Now, to make it look irregular, the wash pattern, especially on flat areas, I like to dab it with a bit of cloth so you get a, like a really nice irregular wash pattern. And it's just dabbing it, it's a bit like rag rolling, I suppose. Uh, and you just keep dabbing that and getting off the areas till you're happy. Let that dry um, and you'll be left with something pretty cool. Right guys, so tell me what you think below. Um, if you'd have done it slightly differently or do you'd have used a different process, let me know guys. It's nice to see what other terrain builders or hear what other terrain builders are doing. Especially on something like this that's quite high fantasy and the world's your oyster. No nautical pun intended. <laughs> but I'm really enjoying the build because I've got complete freedom. With high fantasy, I can paint the sea as blue as I want. I can... I can paint the rocks as off-coloured as I want. I can do as strong a dry brush as I want. And it doesn't matter. It do, just do what looks cool. Um, and that's why I'm enjoying it, because it's just a very simple build, and I can put the time into the things that matter. Okay? It's not, not all about ultra, hyper, high realism. Um, it's just a fun gaming table. And, yeah, for something quick and cheap like this, it's, it's awesome. But yeah, guys, let me know what you think, all right? If you're liking these videos, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe as you do. Uh, but please hit the bell button, because every time you hit that bell button, uh, not every time, but when you hit that bell button, you will be notified when I upload on Tuesday and Fridays, so twice a week. Uh, and it keeps me in a job, because it means you go, oh, he's uploaded again, let's see what he's doing. <laughs> if you're liking the videos, guys, though, if you want to support the channel, do check all my links below. Uh, because of the popularity of YouTube and how things have gone, I've been able to bring out my own scenic range, making scenics affordable, okay? So from static grasses, foam flocks, uh, base ready mixes, fast drying glues, whatever you want should be there. If there's things that I use regular that I don't sell, they will be in my Amazon affiliates. If there's nothing in there that you want at all, but you do still want to support me, I don't do Patreon and I, I, don't, I don't like donations and things, you could just do your daily shopping through Amazon or just buy what you normally buy through Amazon for friends, family, yourself, whatever. If you go through the links, I get a little bit of a cut back from that. Um, and it's no extra cost to you. It just means I get a little bit of a cut for you using Amazon. Um, and as you can see, I'm trying to step up the quality of my videos and I'm trying to do that. And because of processes like Amazon affiliates and because of my flocks and everything else, the money from that is helping me improve this YouTube channel um, week on week. All right, guys. So thanks for everything. Um, we'll treat this as a uh, 70,000 subscriber video in my three years on YouTube, which it's been a hell of a ride, and I've got to thank you guys for it, okay? Um, it's, been a, it's been a rocky roller coaster, and uh, yeah, it's, it's been fun, but now I'm doing it full time. I've got to thank you all. So here's to 100,000 subscribers, and uh, I'll see you there. Well, I'll see you again on Tuesday for the next video. Love, love, love.